EKG Burst Part 4. A 23 year old female athlete taking birth control pills has a normal EKG except for T wave inversions in V1 and V2. These are probably what? Normal variant T wave inversions. T wave inversions found only in leads V1 and V2 are a common physiologic variant in young adults, sometimes referred to as a persistent juvenile T wave pattern. Now, more extensive anterior T-wave inversions in young adults could be more serious, and you should start thinking about things like arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy and others. On a normal EKG, the T-wave is positive in all leads except this one. Right, AVR. AVR is the only lead with a negative T-wave. Note that the QRS is also negative in AVR, but the QRS is also negative in a few other leads as well. A tall R wave in V1 with deep Q waves in the anterolateral leads in a young male suggests this condition. Tall R wave in V1, deep Q waves in the anterolateral leads. You may also hear a systolic murmur. This is hokum hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, formerly known as IHSS. Tall R wave in V1 and deep Q waves in the anterolateral leads occur because the septum is thickened, thus causing marked septal forces. And remember, the septum is depolarized first, before the ventricles. So does one normally get an R wave in V1? Yes, but in Hokum it's a bit taller. And why does one get an R wave in V1? This is the septum being depolarized, and the septum is depolarized before the ventricles, as we just mentioned. It is depolarized from left to right, giving you depolarization towards V1, thus a positive R wave. So if the septum is thickened, you get an even bigger R wave in V1. And does one normally get little Q waves in the anterolateral leads? For example, leads 1, AVL, and V3 through V6? Yes, but in Hokum, you get deeper Q waves in these leads. And why does one get Q waves in the anterolateral leads normally? Once again, it is because the septum is depolarized first, from left to right, giving you depolarization away from the anterolateral leads. So if the septum is thickened, you would also expect deeper Q waves in the anterolateral leads. And what accentuates the murmur of Hokum? Valsalva can do it, and standing. And remember, this is also true for mitral valve prolapse. Standing and Valsalva increase the murmurs of both Hokum and mitral valve prolapse. All other murmurs are decreased in intensity upon either standing or Valsalva. Depolarization or repolarization? Which one occurs from epicardium to endocardium? Yes, repolarization. Depolarization occurs from endocardium to epicardium, and then repolarization follows and goes from epicardium to endocardium. With mild to moderate hyperkalemia, there is development of peak T waves and a reduction in the size of these waves. P waves. Hyperkalemia, peak T waves, and reduced P waves. What can hypercalcemia do to the QT interval? Hypercalcemia can shorten the QT interval. And what about hypocalcemia? Hypocalcemia can cause prolonged QT interval, and that can put you at risk for syncope, torsades de point, and sudden cardiac arrest. So this is a very important ECG finding. And what are some other causes of prolonged QT? Okay, well, there are many, but the other two electrolyte abnormalities that confer a greater risk would be what? Right, hypomagnesemia and hypokalemia. Many drugs can prolong the QT interval. Which antiarrhythmic drugs should you worry about? How about the class 1A antiarrhythmics such as disopyramide, quinidine, and procainamide? And also class 3 antiarrhythmics such as sotalol, dofetilide, and rarely amiodarone. 
And the main antibiotic to worry about that can prolong the QT is what? Sure, erythromycin, but you should also look out for ketoconazole and the fluoroquinolones. And the list goes on and on, so look at the medication list if you see a patient with prolonged QT. Also, don't forget about the inherited causes. You may remember Jervell and Lang-Nielsen syndrome from your step 1 board exams, this being an autosomal recessive cause of prolonged QT syndrome associated with deafness and a 50% mortality risk by the age of 15. However, 65-75% to 75 of all inherited long QT syndromes can be explained by defects in the three most common types of long QT syndrome genes, identified as LQT1, LQT2, and LQT3. Finally, you should know that scientists are investigating a possible link between long QT syndrome and SIDS, i.e. the Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, as well as links to death in runners and swimmers. This type of fascicular block causes marked right axis deviation, i.e. 120 degrees or more, and is a diagnosis of exclusion. This is left posterior fascicular block. You must rule out other causes of rightward QRS axis, including physiologic variant, RV overload state, and lateral wall MI, among several others.